Hey guys, welcome back to Noob Nerd. It's been a week. I'm back again with another video. I'm trying to get these weekly uploads done and dusted, but also have a bit more videos here and there. Not just once, one video a week. Need to do better than that. We're busy this week, but now I'm back with another tier maker video. Of course, I'd really appreciate if you dropped a like, subscribed and shared. I am the Noob Nerd. This is where I do all the comic book reactions to films, TV shows, but also branching out to some gaming streams. And I want to let I want you guys to let me know what to do for future videos, of course. I always appreciate your support. But yeah, I'm doing another tier maker video. My previous one was of Marvel Netflix and the one before that was of course the MCU. So it only seems fitting to do a DCEU version as well. Of course the Warner Brothers are now going into a slightly different direction now, of course. In October, they'll be releasing the Joker movie, which I'm very excited um, for. Don't need to go into that. Made some videos about that already. Obviously, they're going to be doing a sort of soft reboot. Of course, that Joker film is not part of the DCEU. Birds of Prey is acting as a soft reboot, reboot almost. Wonder Woman 2020... Was it 2020? Yeah, Wonder Woman will be coming out soon, but that's next year. So, yeah, these films are just seven films coming out and it's going to be a while till we get another movie and yeah it looks like there's a oh, batman there's a new batman coming of course as well so yeah let's just look at these first seven dceu movies and obviously it's not going to be as extensive as the mcu was but yeah i just want to give the dc some of its some some credit but also of course note down some of its issues of course you have the tier maker list here. I'm going to hold it to the same standard tiers that we did for the MCU tiers. So, of course, we got God tier, which means the best of the best. Of course, this is all my opinion, of course. So, if you let me know your down, let me let me know your opinion down below. So, obviously, I'm not right. This is just my opinion. It's always different perspectives, especially with these films. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot. Of, there will be a lot of controversial perspectives. Um, yeah, so God tier there, best of the best. We have a good, um, we have average, so some good, some bad. They kind of balance each other out. Forgettable is like mostly bad, but it's just you're not really entertaining. It's just a bit crap, so you just don't remember it. It's, it's not even that it's bad, that it's just forgettable. It's just, it's just meh. You're not going to remember it. You're not going to find it any value. And that's what you want to see. That's what I want to see in films, especially comic book films. Some of these characters mean a lot to people. Loads of people actually, and of course we have the finally just bad, just plain bad, not a back, not a credible reputation, not no, not a credible representation of these wonderful comic book characters. So yeah, let's start chronologically with the one that started it all, and that is Man of Steel. Of course, that was never gonna be, it never intended to be the first DCU film, but it just that's what happened. That's what Warner Brothers decided to go down that route. And I'm going to put Man of Steel. Bloody, my mouse is not working. A few minutes later. Sorry guys about that. Needed to fix fix my jamming mouse. But now, yes, as you can see, Man of Steel. God tier. Yes, already slamming it down with my hardcore opinions that some of you might not agree on. But Man of Steel, to me, is a great Superman film for the ages, for the modern times. And it also pays homage to what came before. But... It, of course, it recognises the dark, desolate place that Zack Snyder creates, and some people say he went a little bit overboard with. But with this movie, you have the, the great care and essence of what Superman is, a beacon of light in a dark place. And someone who can withstand all the hatred and maybe the tenacity of tension of aliens coming to Earth. But he stays with the human race and wants to protect it, even despite all the adversity and all the pain he's been gone through. And this movie it illustrates it simply and beautifully with, of course, flashbacks that detail Clark's life going from place to place. Henry Cavill, such a good Superman here, man. Has anger, he has sorrow, he has love, he has happiness, he has superheroisms, he has immaturity. Of course, in that famous scene where he p flies for the first time, it's just handled with great care and you can just tell the people making this film not just Zack Snyder, but the entire cinematography, everything, the writing, it just really took Superman with great care, and you can tell they love this character a bit. Even if their interpretation is different to other people's, I think this Superman film, many people will agree, this is a really great film, and I, I for me, is a god-tier Superman film. Up there with Superman 1, Superman 2, the original Christopher, Christopher Reeve movies, of course. 
um, lowest lane, maybe not the best lowest lane, maybe not the most mem memorable lowest lane, but she does a good job. The way they handle the characters is really good. Of course, um, what's oh, what's the actor's name? Um, who I forgot who played lowest lane again. Great actress. I'm so dumb. I, I, my mind's just gone through a brain fart. But of course, the actress is a good actress. Of course, Oscar worthy. She, they do a good job of making her focus of the movie, not just making her damsel of distress, of course. They're never going to do that. She, the way she f figures out what's going on with Clark Kent, making her a pivotal point in the story, making her a pivotal conduit for the audience to to follow her journey as she discovers Superman. As maybe some people don't even know what's going on with this, as we meet this new Superman. She meets this new Superman, we meet this new Superman in at the same time. The cinematography is beautiful. Zod, Michael Sheen, wasn't it? I think that's the name. Not Michael Sheen. Um, something Sheen. I'm I'm losing actors' names by the minute. Man still came out so long ago, six years ago, man. Wow, feels like yesterday. Definitely not to me because I'm forgetting everyone's names. But Zod, General Zod, intimidating. Ever since that line, I will find him. Bloody hell, very good. And that whole flashback scene, that whole that whole origin twenty minute scene of alien goodness, mate. And it was so good. Sci-fi, Joel, Russell Crowe inspired casting. His speech, his voice alone, even when he's just speaking with no emotion, it sounds just so hopeful and inspiring. You don't need to tell me what speeches he said. He's really good in that film, man. I wish he appeared in more DCU films, actually. Russell Crowe is such a good actor. And he was such a good choice for Joel. And just the whole flashback scene gave an insight into Krypton's past, Krypton's mythology, Krypton's customs in such a... In a way we've never seen before, and way, and it's, the, the CGI still holds up today, of course. That's that's a major point as well. Of course, you could say, oh, loads of buildings being chopped, chopped down, <laughs> chopped to pieces. Essentially, too much, too much destruction for a Superman movie. Well, these are two powerful gods, pretty much, finding their feet, trying to battle their out. Superman's only immature. He's only becoming Superman, Superman we know and love. And Zod, of course, wants to kill everyone. So you can't blame him, and they of course dress it in Batman v Superman as well. So it's like it's one of those things. It's, not, it's a bit of a nitpick in my opinion. Just trying to find something. But for, apart from that potential negative, sensational god tier movie in my eyes. Now we move on. Let me check if I'm still recording. Yes, I am. Um, what came next after this? Batman v Superman, of course. Speaking of Batman v Superman, um, I have got the Ultimate Edition. Uh, Check out my previous video to see the rest of my DVD collection. Uh, <laughs> you love to see it. Uh, Batman v Superman, of course, Ultimate Edition there. Of course, which one am I judging here? I'm just going to judge it off the theatrical cut, of course. These are the films that were released in theatres. So I'll go with that one. But even then, it's still God tier. And it's not going to let me. It's not going to let me. Again, my mouse is pissing me off. I should have done checks on this beforehand. Um, I've had to change it to... At four quadrant, I think that makes a difference. Um, apologies for that technical difficulty once more. Uh, yeah, again, uh, another controversial opinion, just in time. Uh, Batman v Superman, the theatrical edition, god tier, in my eyes. Um, don't really want to go too much into it, I've, I've said my piece in multiple other videos. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, you either love it or you don't. Uh, uh, I know that probably will favour some people who don't like this movie and be like, Sid, Sid, you're not actually justifying your love for this movie. And it's just the message it represents. And Ben Affleck's portrayal of Batman is terrifying. And a, re a real... Like, they had to, they had limited time to introduce this Batman movie, this new Batman to the world, and they did it perfectly. Henry Cavill, again, struggling with the consequences of his actions in the first movie. Wonder Woman introduced here maybe a bit rushed but gal gadot is a fantastic fierce action hero in this movie as well so yeah god tier lex luthor is underrated in my opinion as a villain as well um sometimes he can get a little bit over the line cross the line a bit too much in terms of cheesiness but far from that i think it was sensational uh superman's death will still have a will still have a hold on me to this day i think justice league of course kind of negated that a bit but it's fine it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. But yeah, these two movies got tier level in my eyes. Of course, again, as I said before, justified Man of Steel's.
plot hole there of why is there so many buildings getting killed and use that in his, to its advantage to form his motivation for Batman, which would make perfect sense. Okay, enough of that. Discuss it below if you disagree with me. I don't mind, I don't mind. I love the discussions of this, man. Uh, what's next? Suicide Squad. Of course, all the movies down here. Of course, Average is its own box. Forgettable is its own box. Good top fight. God tier top left. And just bad. I'm just going to put like in the center middle. At the bottom. There. So. Suicide Squad came next. And I'll put it on Average. I haven't actually watched it in a while, actually. But, again, had great potential. Good parts, bad parts. Let's start with the good. Margot Robbie inspired casting for Harley Quinn. Some of her jokes don't, don't land, but most of them do. Um, her relationship with the Joker is fascinating to me, and she does sell it. She does sell she's been through a lot. It's just that there's some, most of the scenes are cut from the movie. It's like, give me more Javel Leto Joker. Like, give me more so I can actually cement this idea of the Joker, this new Joker in my head. Like, all the scenes he was in with the Harley Quinn, I saw potential there, but I just needed more of it to cement my views of it. It's just... It was a, I, I can't say it's a bad Joker. I can't say it's a sick Joker either. I really, I really feel Javi Lodo did have a really good joke on his hands, but Warner Brothers just snuffed it out. Deadshot's really good in this movie. Wilson is very good. The soundtrack can get a very distracting, but it still pump, pumps you up to this day. You know what I mean? Some of the tunes are really good. Rick Flag could have done more with him, but he, he did a good job, Joel Kidderman. I think this is one of his better roles. Amanda Waller, of course, again. Inspired casting there. Hopefully we'll see more of her in the next Suicide Squad movie. Enchantress. Wrong choice for a villain, in my opinion. Katana. Severely underused. Uh, Slipknot, of course, dies early. Cr Killer Croc, who's supposed to be a Batman villain. I've just read Batman Hush. Killer Croc is a bad man. But he is just, again, severely underused for such a major Batman villain, villain who should be getting more screen time and better use of. David Ayer should have got better use of that. Of that character, hopefully we see that in Batman, in the Batman movie. Um, Jai Courtney as Boomerang is a very good casting choice, and he really is a surprise, surprisingly good character in this movie. Jai Courtney, Jai Courtney, I haven't seen him as many good roles, but he really finds his footing as a really comedic guy, tricking Slipknot into killing himself pretty much. It's really, it's really mad stuff actually. Um, Good thing they brought him back. Actually, I could I could see what they did for this n new Suicide Squad movie. Uh, David Ayer, I think might have been meddled with as, as well. I don't know if he was the best director for this choice, but also Warner Brothers equally scared of the backlash from Batman v Superman made this movie very much more bombastic, like Guardians of the Galaxy. Galaxy that didn't work in their favor, in my opinion. I think the Suicide Squad teaser that came out eight remember ages ago when they got leaked and when they got released that dark sinister tone this is what they should have stuck with in my opinion so yeah average in my opinion maybe it, it may it may go down a bit i have or may go a bit up actually i might have to watch it again who knows the next movie is wonder woman and i'll take that into the good section um let me put these back down to the corner so you know what i'm on about wonder woman is a good movie um oh they watched it once fully and yeah that third act third third act uh third act is a bit lackluster in terms of it's like it's trying to be grandiose but it fails instead of the only thing that works there is the steve uh trevor stuff at, which really pays off by the end as well hopefully they, hopefully they don't negate that in the new movie the next movie they're doing um uh, excuse me there uh steve, steve trevor chris pine and gal gadot's relationship is really sold really really well done fish out of water story seen a million times before but done really in a really cool way and really in a way that fits in with the tone of the dcu beforehand while taking us into an entirely bloody hell new direction with it it was a really good progression progression of the dceu even while going backwards to the past to the flashback to how wonder woman became who she was and Themyscira, the battle between the soldiers and of course the Themyscirans, a really good addition to that movie, it really added some action, really cool action, but also gave you something to 
to root for already b beginning with like really being sold out Wonder Woman's part of these race of women on the island it's a bit ridiculous but we're making it work we're making it fit in this history timeline it's really good stuff it's really cool stuff and it makes you feel sorry for some of the characters when they get hurt and Wonder Woman has to leave the island to pursue new dreams and you really feel that fear throughout and you feel, feel like she's she's also going to protect herself but also her naivety is going to get in a lot of trouble but that's what we like that's what Gal Gadot really portrays that well Steve Trevor's romance you 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 feel for it but his character in itself is not just there to patronize Wonder Woman she he's there as an equal almost and it, it was a really good stepping stone in female superhero films and it's just a great super, superhero film in its own right not perfect the ending is a bit lackluster it does have the same profound effect to me as these two two other films in the god tier but it's better than Suicide Squad of course so yeah Wonder Woman as a good film hopefully I think the free, I have a feeling the next film's gonna be a lot better maybe even god tier who knows who knows oh yeah and also to add to that finally um the villain great actor from a Harry Potter franchise could have been a really good twist but they kind of rushed it and Etta Candy very good comedic relief it'll be a shame that she won't be actually um She's a very heartwarming character in the comics and also portrayed very well here. Um, yeah, it's a shame that she won't be in the next movie. Hopefully she, they find a way to add her in. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the next film that came after Wonder Woman. And that is Justice League. And I'll put that as an average film. Of course, some of you might think it's forgettable. Some, f some of you might think it's just bad. And, you know what, I watched it, of course I reserved my expectations hugely. Of course I've got a huge poster of Justice League over there, but that doesn't say anything about what I like about this movie. It's just a really good poster, and of course, um, they tried to salvage this movie in any way they could. And they, s yeah, it was always going to be a mixed bag, wasn't it, at least. Um, that was the probably the, the ceiling it was, it was put on. Um, Justice League is, doesn't deserve that, it deserves to have a higher ceiling than that, a pinnacle that it can reach. Of course, it had to try and please everyone, try to go back into the light from the deep and depressing stuff that people didn't like, apparently. Um, but of course, riddled with back, just backstage, behind the scenes mayhem, of course, Zack Snyder's daughter unfortunately died, rest in peace. Of course, they had to bring in Joss Whedon, and he, he had a completely different vision, of course, Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers wanted to have a more of a comedic feeling if you know what I mean just really ruined some scenes and really just feel disjointed at times but the potential was there and you see it with Ezra Miller's Flash I still think he was really good even though again sometimes he's a bit too cheesy running theme with these characters Cyborg is very good very good in my opinion the characterization is really good I really if they had flashbacks to him in this movie he, Cyborg would probably would have been my one of my favorite characters he still is but Ray Fisher was such a good casting choice it's just again scenes cut really annoying Aquaman just says yeah for just it's just a cool surfer dude for the movie which is of course ends the Aquaman debate of oh can he be cool but at the same time nothing of any real substance of course Wonder Woman we know of Batman we know of of course Batman's substance is kind of removed a bit but I still like him in this movie but some people think he's a travesty that they went from Ben Affleck pinnacle to really just take the piss um, <laughs> excuse my language but realistically, uh, Batman was still good in this movie. I like his suit. I like everyone's suits. Superman's Return is interestingly is interesting, but it's not good. It's not the best it could have been, really. Um, he should have been brought back, brought back as Zack Snyder originally intended. We really, I really want to see the Zack Snyder cut, of course. Hashtag release the Snyder cut. Of course, Jason Momoa knows that exists, but I don't think it's a, f a forgettable movie. I remember it. Just it's not bad. It's just a really average movie that they cobbled together. Um, I don't know, man. It, it, it's, I really hope they make just another, just another Justice League movie that really just it does this team justice. And some of the action set pieces are interesting. Again, the cinematography, the visuals are decent. Um, it's just the villain Steppenwolf's a bit crap. But the parademons are very interestingly visually, but apart from that, it's just a bit like why don't give a shit? It's just bad guys. But they should be, they should be home. They should be the new world. This is the new gods. They should be more 
epic than that, and that's what Zack Snyder, I think, would have brought to this. But, of course, they had to rush it for time. They had to condense it. They wanted to condense it, of course, as quickly as possible. And that's... It just, it just fails all because of that. Um, yeah, it's an average movie. Um, probably because I gave it low expectations, and it just about progressed through that. Who knows which characters are going to come back. Ben Affleck's not going to come back. Wonder Woman, of course, is back. Aquaman, of course, is the next movie of this list. And I think... I'm so close to putting this in God tier. Go on. Yes. That's better. So you can see everything. Um, I watched Aquaman very recently. And it actually inspired me to make this video. Is it... Do you know what? It's okay. My, I was watching with my fa fellow family members. And they admitted that... They said themselves it was a bit cheesy at points. But... I, I just... I couldn't keep watching it, man. It's just... James won again. Who knows how to salvage a movie even when the script is a bit off even when it's a bit too cheesy he makes it work he makes it full of heart and gold and just full of it's full of like love just love for the character of Aquaman while also making it work for a modern audience and Jason Momoa in the classic suit by the end Nicole Kidman as the mother the classic love story of uh, two old two old people but obviously the, f the theme of love are oh, prevails throughout all of course it's a classic thing but he just makes it work in the new context in the the new world of the sea of atlantis that is beautiful to witness and you really want you really learn there's a lot of exposition scenes and that's a bit of a, a fall behind the movie that's what i think stops him from being got here there's too much exposition but and some points but the way they do it is decent and it's just sometimes it gets a bit repetitive in that sense but mirror 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 Mira, I'm heard, introducing Just League, nothing at all to her, but here she is transformed to a comic book accurate representation. Um, I'm heard does a really good job of it. Some of the dialogue is stiff at places, these actors aren't the best, but they work within the movie they are put in, and they are elevated by the script. Not the script, I just said the dialogue wasn't good. They're elevated by the set pieces, they're elevated by the, the music, the soundtrack is very sensational. The villain, Ocean Master, bloody hell. Great casting, of course, they got fellow actors from The Conjuring to play Ocean Master. Sensational villain, really perfect casting there. Black Manta could have been done better. Again, really just felt like a cookie cutter Power Rangers bad guy who got really rushed in his origin and really was just shoe shoehorned in this film. Because I think his 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 old origin with his dad being killed was a bit rushed also. But it provides a good action set piece at the start. And it really, it just kept on, like, Aquaman rides a seahorse, mate. Bloody hell. You know what I mean? Like, you would have thought that was happening in 2017 or 2018. Who would have thought that was going to happen? And it will make a billion dollars. Must have done something right, eh? Of course, I've got a review, a full in depth review of Aquaman, of course. So, if you want to know my full thoughts, check out that. And finally, last but certainly not least, it is Shazam. Can I carry it? Where is it going to go? It's good. It's a good movie. It could even be got here if I watch it again. Um, never, never was into Shazam. I never knew of him really before this movie came out. Of course, I knew tidbits out there from Injustice or a little bit of comic appearances here and there. But Shazam, it's just a great. It fits in with the DCEU perfectly, in my opinion. The whole gloomy, wizard, scary Harry Potter factor it brings in. Well, not well, us. We're feeling like it, bringing the female. Excuse me, familiarity with the whole big setup, the whole little kid, big man's body. But also, of course, Harry Potter stuff, but also in the new setting again. Just reinvigorating old common tropes that people love to see Christmas movie. I think I, I'd love to watch this again in Christmas time. But even when you watch it any time, I watched it, of course, when it came out. It's still a really good, fulfilling, heartwarming movie about family and how Billy Batson fits into this new family. And they really do a good job in quickly but creatively showing Billy Batson, of course, stealing from the cops, obviously causing a bit of trouble, but he has a, but he, there's something about him that makes him worthy of the champion. Probably because the wizard couldn't, of course, have time to pick someone else, but he was there in the right place at the right time, and, and I like how the movie starts with a villain. Of course, Dr. Savannah is such a great villain throughout, really good match for Billy Batson, them two are on the same wave then, in terms of, like, importance given to the script. But of course, by the end, it is Billy Batson's movie. It's, it's his family. It's the Shazam family rising up again. Really cool moment, man. Really cool moment to see. 
want to see more of the kids develop. You want to see more of them. And hopefully we see that more in the sequel. But of course, Billy Bats and Dr. Savannah, really good acting by both younger actors and the older actors. Uh, really good comedy, especially in the school area. Especially with um, uh, the, what's it called, Freddie Freeman's character as well. Very good comic relief that co goes along. Really good match for Billy Batson's character. And yeah, it's just a whole lot of fun for kids, but also for adults hoping to find that childlike wonder again. You know what I mean? And it, it, and it did make enough money in the box, box office, I know, but it, it deserves more love. It deserves more love in that sense. But who 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 knows? They, I think they are going to carry on with this franchise, and I can't wait to see what they do more. Glad they didn't rush into Black... Black Manta, Black Adam, good that they didn't rush into that, but it looks like they're going to be going into more crazy comic book stuff, and it it it, it, it felt it felt, cool. it felt a bit of course fantastical, a bit cheesy, but it, it, in this case it works because this is this is what it's supposed to be. It's this is what Shazam is. He wants to be an ideal idealized superhero. He's your typical superhero. He's like, oh, Freddy, I don't know how to be a superhero. You're a good superhero. What's what's about what's what makes a superhero? A classic superhero, and he tries to be that sometimes with hilarious results, of course. Really good showcase of powers, the lightning effects, the Shazam effect is really good, cool as well. And yeah, the wizard, the whole Monster Zinc factor to it, because you see the, do uh, the doors opening doors literally to other magical dimensions that we hope to see explored, but while also not making it feel too like bombastic exposition. I think they handled that really well in this sense. And it really is close to God tier in that sense. Um, I think Aquaman and Wonder Woman are on the same page in terms of being good, but Shazam could really sneak into God tier, man. It's a, I think, I think it's a underrated movie still to this day. But I know there's, there's a very good, very good fan base out there, of course, for all these movies, actually. So I, I, I dig that. I dig that. I, I love both Marvel and DC. Um, and yeah, uh, there's no forgettable movie for me, or just bad movie. Maybe Suicide Squad, may, uh, maybe these two are in the fringes of average and forgettable. With Shazam, of course, being the edge of God here. But no, I think I uh, I agree with everything in this list. In my, for my, I agree with myself. Um, and yeah, I think that's enough from me. Um, let me know your guys' thoughts down below. I'm sure there's going to be different opinions cir circling around. But yeah, I'll, I'll really... I really like doing this, these kind of videos. Let me know what kind of videos you want me to do down in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.